while I'm on my big American road trip, I'm in southern Arizona and I'm at LSR Performance uh, seeing Dustin because of two reasons. Uh, firstly was some maintenance on uh, the Africa Twin that I was riding down here and then there was one bike I definitely needed to look at. The main reason for coming to see Dustin tonight though is the bike that I would have been riding if we were actually at Bonneville and it's an interesting creation but it'd be better if Justin tells you about it. Most of it used to be a Triumph Rocket 3. It was a first year bike, a 2004. We took it racing in its original form. We just glued a turbo to the side of it, hauled ass, barely any boost, went right up to the rev limiter. I think it'd only go 160 miles an hour. So we took the off season and we did some things to it. We opened up the rev limit to about 9,000 RPM. That gave us the gearing that we wanted to. We took the turbo and moved it up under the center of the bike so it was out of the wind stream, put a bigger turbo on it. That's a G660, so it, it'll make 500 at the wheel, 550 if you want it to. It's made about 360 at seven pounds of boost. Lowered the whole bike. Uh, that's a ZG1400 rear wheel, Concourse 1400. I forget what you guys call it over there, big cruiser wheel. ZZR14 or something. That, there it is right there. Used to handle in the weight. Uh, boost a gen 2 high boost of front end with the forks extended a little bit to get some of our trail back shorten the radiator up to get it out of the wind the mailbox on the front's probably the weirdest thing that everybody notices that was new for this year we were actually trying to get some of the the weight and the water tank for the intercooler out of the back and move it to the front because it turns out in bonneville uh, things got to be heavy in the front or they or they flip around at 200 miles an hour and you have a copper <laughs> yeah, this came from our uh, from our good friend Josh, Josh Owens. He he rode with us back in a, when we first debuted this, and you have to have fairing to run in the fairing class. And we ran the bike naked, so they said, "Well, we need some fairing." And we said, "Well, what if we cover the headlights up with something?" I said, "Well, technically that's fairing. It, it moves the wind around the headlights." So he went to the back of his truck, had a four by ten sheet of copper for building a still in the Carolinas. I'm not making that up. Cut it out with a pair of shears, glued it on the front of it, put his signature on it. I guess he's little bit famous from TV and we ran it that way set four records that year open class records didn't didn't miss a beat just did one pass after the other <laughs> now it's hiding on the front to make us fairing legal we have a big fairing for it but it's not quite ready for big fairing yet we have to do some more development on the tail section to make it go straight ultimately this thing with this gearing this much power 220 miles an hour is, is realistic for a bike that weighs 690 pounds before you sit on it on questionable surface and then some gearing trickery in the back of it and there's a, a step down shaft drive kind of thing that goes on in here cut a couple of gears up flip the gear pattern over and it'll go as fast as we can have enough road for we'll maybe 250 in the next year or two ultimately take it to bolivia to look at the 300 records it's it's a possibility with some really good body work <laughs> the first year we actually had an electric shifter on it, but it turns out the electric shifters are really, really sensitive to their leverage ratios and how long they are. And we had it working pretty good on the road. We took it out onto the, onto the freeway because it had a license plate on it and it shifted a couple good times. But the first pass in Bonneville, it started to, started to move the lever. So it just reached down there and grabbed it. And it's only a five speed, just running up into fifth and you let 280 foot pounds of torque do the work for you. You don't need a bunch of gears. <laughs> and I figured, oh, why not? I'll just weld a little handle onto it. And that's all you do. You start in second and you grab it two or three times at about 100 miles an hour and then lean into the throttle and she just motors away. So, so what you're saying is the salt slippery at Bonneville. <laughs> You've got 500 horsepower and the first thing you do is take your hand off the bars. Uh, yeah, before you get going too fast, though. If you get it up into six, there's less torque at the rear wheel, so it makes it actually makes it easier. That's what I tell tech, and they haven't kicked me out yet. So here we are. <laughs> and of course, these things are uh, function over form, so uh, just enough seat to sit on. That's actually the stock seat with a little bit of wetsuit duct taped to the top of it, so you can get low. They've got rules where you can't be any lower than the rim in this class, so it's it's just high enough. And it hides the uh, hides the fuel pumps and the filters and the air to water intercooler box and all the all the fun stuff that's in there. Uh, and for Bonneville rules, the fuel lines have to be covered in fire retardant material. Correct. And the FIM came up with a new rule last year, and they said that if your fuel pumps aren't in the tank, you have to have a shutoff valve 
hard attached to the tank with no flexible line. So now we've got this ridiculous little fuel cutoff line in here too that does nothing. But <laughs> <laughs> yes, it passes. It passes tech. That's what it does. <laughs> Obviously, we don't need a particularly big fuel tank because you're not going very far. R rules say 1.4 gallons is the minimum for almost all the regulations, and I think that's 1.8, give or take. And that's American gallons. Yes. Uh, yeah, two well, what would that would that be in liters? 1.8 times 3.74. It's it's something. Eight liters. There we go. Seven, that's eight liters. Plenty. Yeah. That'll get you down the track twice. Um, Anything useful on that? So all that ever does, if I had the battery charge, I'd start it up for you, but I don't. That was actually a really super cheap tachometer when I first got this running so we could see how fast it was spinning. The first time we rode it, the tach would just stop at 5,800 and at 9,000 it was useless and the speedometer stopped at 120. So you just, you just kind of did what it did. That is off of, God, I forget where they sell those for, like little dirt bikes or something like that. I have a big, beautiful, brilliant CAN bus gauge that I'd never put on it because, yeah, I don't know, you don't really look at it much. When you're in the riding position, actually, as funny as it is, when I rode it a couple, little while ago in May, you're back here, you're actually kind of looking through one eyeball over here and you just sort of, sort of glance over with one eyeball at it every once in a while and realize you're not going fast enough and that's it. Try to get your face under it. But they're crazy enough that they have rules about how far you can put aftermarket gauge clusters. Like they have to be within a certain distance and a certain height because people make fairings out of their gauge clusters and try to hide them. They, they think of everything. <laughs> also, not very much steering. Oh, Jesus, yeah. A couple yeah. inches, which is good. When it, gets to, when it gets to tank slapping over big bumps, it doesn't have very far to go and it can't pinch your hands very much. Uh, turning is not something you want to do out there. <laughs> There's no front brakes because you don't need to slow down that fast, but there is front discs. Absolutely. That was to, in an effort to get some of the weight balance to the front. Uh, so it turns out there's a really bunch of really smart guys, way smarter than me, figured out that these things, they call it a pig on ice. Out on the salt and the dirt, you have about 20% of the traction that you do on dry pavement. So what's holding your front wheel from moving side to side is one fifth of what it is in the real world. And this track is so bumpy you think it's flat but it's bumpy and you're moving so fast that it'll knock that suspension up to the point where the front end is essentially it's just floating over the top of the salt surface so naturally if there's any wind to push it around it'll just push the front of the bike right around so what you have to do is get the weight sort of far forward and the and the arrow in the back it's like throwing a dart through the air you throw a dart with the fins in the back and the weight in the front it goes straight you throw a dart backwards bike turns around, you, you eat salt, it's a bad time. And it usually happens right about 200 miles an hour is where it starts to show up, which is not a good place. And it feels like a little bit of a wobble at first too. So you're like, eh, I, I can probably drive through this. And you, and you give it some throttle and then, then you wake up in the hospital, it's a bad time. <laughs> it doesn't work at all. So the discs were essentially just to move some of the weight balance forward. Just like this big, we call it the barn or the mailbox. We're still figuring out a name for it. It's just a water tank for the intercooler to keep the, the charge temperatures low. Not that it really needs it. At 500 horsepower, it needs it. At, at 300, it's, it's not even working hard. It's about three pounds of boost it takes to do that. This, this motor started as a, it's a, still a 2.3 liter. Got it's, it's got to have at least a seven inch rod in it at this point. It, we can't turn it down enough. That's for what it's doing right now. With good body work at 300 horsepower, you 240s, 250 mile an hour capable probably. Without, you know, we've, we've done 208, 210 with 300 horsepower, which sounds crazy. You can do that with a 200 horsepower super bike, but when you get out on the, on the dirt or salt with a big honking heavy naked bike, it, it changes things a little bit. So basically what you're saying is, you like fiddling with stuff and going fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ab absolutely. We've been getting killed on the weather, so not as much going fast as as fiddling for the last couple of years, but we're, we're getting back out to it. This one's going to be proper fast. It's got a couple of years to go. Next year, 200 with no fairing on it, 220 with fairing on it. The year after that, 250 with fairing on it. Within five years, 280 to 300 with fairing on it. That's the goal all out of a British 
what looks like a car motor. I have at least two guys in meat go, where'd you get the diesel to put it in the back? It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's phenomenal. <laughs> well, hopefully at some point in the next couple of years then, uh, you'll get to have a go on it and hopefully I'll have a get to go, get to go have a go at it if I can speak properly. And that's it, fingers I'm crossed. We just need some weather. Absolutely, looking forward to it. There is also some other interesting stuff in the workshop, so we're just gonna have a little bit of a poke around. So the first bike lurking in the workshop is this little 300cc Yamaha. So this is basically the R3, but with the bodywork ripped off it. Uh, I think they call it an MT-03. I'm not up with Yamahas, but, this was originally a track coaching bike from California and the lady who owns it decided she wanted to go to Bonneville. So this is getting a bit of work. It's going from the standard 39 horsepower on Dustin's dyno and it's having uh, two mil overbore, some head work, some cams and a turbo. And with about seven pounds of boost pressure, they think it'll do about 90 horsepower. So it's got to do, in the unfaired 350 turbo class, uh, it's got to do at least 120 mile an hour, which shouldn't be a problem with that much power. And if it is a problem, just wind the turbo up. The other odd creation in the uh, corner of the workshop is this little um, car. So basically this is a little stunt car for doing donuts and stuff like that. And it has in the front of it a 2006-7 ZX10 engine. Um, but due to the odd licensing laws in Arizona, uh, that's actually road legal. It has headlights, number plates, the lot, that can legally be driven on the road. And the next bit of development work though for that is to strap that turbo to it. That is a 2871 off of a, it's a Skyline upgrade turbo, so. So, <laughs> so the turbo that you would use to upgrade your Skyline uh, is going in uh, basically a clown car with a ZX-10 engine in it. Um, ridiculous, but possibly brilliant. The last bike to look at in the other side of Dustin's garage is of course a Harley, because we're in America. So this is the 114 uh, cubic inch, which is about a 1300 cc uh, air-cooled old push rod thing that's actually brand new. Makes about 90 horsepower on Dustin's dyno, but there are some bits to go in it, including these con rods, and this is the oddity with Harleys, they share a crank pin, so the rods actually sit like that. Um, and they go up and down and round and round. Um, but because it's a Harley, they have, of course, engineered weak points into everything, so it's a terrible design. It is very narrow, but massively flawed in its uh, general engineering. Uh, but it is going to be then holding up these lovely Carrillo pistons. Uh, so this thing is going to be uh, about 12 to 1 compression ratio, a bit bigger CC, some head work, and by the time it's done, about 200 horsepower. Oh, and some big lumpy camshafts, <laughs> which I'm assuming still sits in the bottom of the engine because, you know, it's push rods. <laughs> anyway, that should be, by the time it's finished with, uh, it's actually got a carbon front rim, uh, carbon fenders, it's getting a carbon rear rim and a load of other work. Uh, it is going to be surprisingly fast because it will be very torquey. Unfortunately, still attached to a Harley Davidson chassis, so it will be undoubtedly terrifying. Right, so I'd like to thank Dustin for letting me come and have a poke around his workshop and for potentially letting me ride his ridiculous Triumph Rocket 3. Uh, if you're in Arizona or the southern half of the United States and you want something daft with a turbo building, uh, find Dustin at LSR Performance. He's your man. Thanks for watching.